Yes, my peoples, it's T, and yes, I am back with another Apprentice reaction. So I just finished watching week three, episode three. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Let's get it. So this week, this week we had a task which was paying homage to the BBC. I think it was a thousand years or a hundred years, a <laughs> hundred years or something. Something like that anyway, um, of the BBC. Um, and the task they had to do was create a new preschool cartoon with a character and an original story. And of course, as usual, as happens, what happens in week three, um, the teams are mixed up. So now we have boys and girls mixed up in the teams. Um, initially, um, Rochelle in her new team had an idea to call the team Excelsior, um, which for me, me was an absolute dead suggestion um and nobody liked it either so um another guy um suggested team apex um which i also wasn't a fan of but er everybody liked that and that became team apex now the other team they had a suggestion which i believe was from avi actually um and he suggested the team to be called team affinity initially i thought it was team infinity but um team affinity and um that's what they went with so we now we have team apex and team affinity um so there was quite a people quite a few people vying for the pm spot in this task um surprisingly um i still haven't learned everyone's names yet so i'm going to refer to people um by just random things that describe them potentially but um there was two people running for the affinity team um and in the end avi was fighting quite hard and he said his, his dad runs a, a children's nursery and he helped for many many years to help run a nursery which i guess is is you know um a good option and a good bit of experience for this task and um, so in the end um everyone chose him to be there was a vote and everyone chose him to be the pm honestly i have absolutely no faith in avi at all and um, he seems like a joke man to me just a complete joke um but let's see if he can actually perform um, let's see if he can perform and apparently he also does um silly little bits and bobs on instagram as well like little dances and um and ever little strange n noises and voices on, on um on instagram after every episode I, I haven't seen that myself um but apparently that's another reason why people don't take him seriously as well um but yeah and then we had team apex who had a good concept on diversity and inclusion um and they yeah they they actually had um just some good ideas overall. Um, not sure they, you know, executed them very well, but some good ideas. Um, I believe Reese was the, was the PM of that team um, with Denisha as the sub team leader. Um, team Apex had an idea around um, having a giraffe um, in the jungle idea as well. And then in the other team, um, they had Danny as, as the sub team leader as well. Um, and then Simba also in that team, um, team apex they had he had a good idea around um using alliteration uh, which is always a good idea to use alliteration in anything that's that's kid, kid related because it's easy to rem to remember and to be fair anything that's marketing related to to be fair um alliteration is a good technique to use for sure um and then we had denisha and whatever the other girl's name was um the one that had just the, the like the piercing blue eyes um they was fighting for what seemed an age over a character name if it, sh if it should be Fifi if it should be Faye um ultimately um yeah it doesn't really matter that much and um the male's name was Femi as well so it ended up being Femi and Faye which yeah it wasn't that inspiring but it was all right um then Team Apex they had um they had Sean Sh Shazia sorry um <laughs> I've got a name for a second um she suggested for the character to be you know just have some diversity and inclusion for the character to be Indian, um, and then the name Yogita um, was suggested. Yogita the giraffe, which again, not very child friendly for you know two to four year olds. Not something I can easily say. It's a lot of words. Yogita the giraffe, um, but it is what it is. Um, then we had Marnie, um, who wanted to you know design the giraffe. Um, she took over from Avi entirely. Um, the only <laughs> Avi completely this. Just, just fell back completely. Um, the only input from Avi was to make the bow pink because it's female, 
which is such an old school way of thinking, such an old school mentality. Um, and at the time I was, I was watching this thinking, what the hell? And I think even Alan Sugar picked up on that as well um, later on in the boardroom. So yeah, very, very poor there. I mean, you would think they would know better um, in this day and age. Um, and the other, teams, the other team's character, Team Apex, their character looked absolutely terrible. So basic, and they didn't even have any hands and feet. Like, how can you forget the basics of, uh, your character's meant to be human, no hands and feet, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But overall, this episode had so many cringy moments, so many cringy moments. And as I said last week, Shazia is the most annoying contestant I've ever seen, or one of the most annoying it's like she just she's just in her own world, and she just to me, I think she just feels very disruptive. She just feels very disruptive. She's just completely in her own world, um, and she's just always saying something which doesn't really help or contribute to anything. It's just always, it's always negative. To be fair, it's just in her own world entirely. Um, but yeah, um, and you know what was funny for me? There's a moment when um, when I think it was Team Team Apex when the the main team saw the design team's characters for the first time and their faces told a picture. It was hilarious. They was like, sorry, what? No hands, no arms, no... Yeah, crazy. Also, Greg is hilarious. Um, Greg is hilarious. His only contribution was to say, a man a man said the sun's gravitational pull and spinning of the earth and he needs to be depicted correctly and all of that. Nobody cares, Greg. Nobody cares. This is a children's cartoon for two to four Two and four year olds, like it's crazy. This guy was talking about the sun's gravitational pull and the spinning of the earth and all of this stuff being depicted on the left and the right. No one cares. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy. But um, Sajia, yeah, she was completely against the whole thing. The whole thing. Um, to be fair, though, she did have some good points. I, I can say she had some good points. That they, they did miss some stuff, and she did, she did say some good points. But overall, she's still in her own world entirely for me. Just yeah, not a fan of her at the moment. Um, but yeah, I did like the concept and the script um, of Team Team Affinities. Um, it was very, to be fair, even the Apex team as well. I, I liked the concept. Um, it, was, it was very inclusive, um, and the the Apex one actually got the message across more clearly. Um, the tall and short thing of Affinity wasn't really clear, um, but we'll see how it goes on the pitch. Um, the lack of hands and feet is a major, major miss. Um, but Sajia wanted to be part of the the pitching team because she, you know, she she kind of said that she was the creation of the of the character. Um, I really I'm really glad that Avi actually um, I'm really actually upset. Sorry that Avi gave in to Sajia and let her stay on the, on the pitch um, at this particular point. He was like, okay, yeah, you can be on a pitch because um, he was so against the whole thing. Um, I'm not sure how useful she could be, but at the same time, obviously with her passion for the character, who knows? She may, um, yeah, she may help as well. Um, and then they had the the market research. Um, the kids were not interested at all, at all, especially in the especially in the Apex team um, team cartoon. And the mums destroyed it, absolutely destroyed it. And in the end, I'm glad Avi actually did switch out um, Danny and Sajia. Um, so, yeah. Avi really, um, really made a good choice there, I think. But um, who knows? Who knows? Um, but again, Avi does not fill me with confidence at all. He seems so awkward and seems just like such a cowboy, such a cowboy. Um, but yeah, we'll see if he, if he performs. Um, and then the client's faces when they saw Femi and Faye, the characters was, was hilarious. Their faces was like, what is this mess? Get it off my screen. Um, it, to be fair, it was shocking, um, so I'm not surprised it wasn't that happy at all. But Simba, being one of the strongest characters in this show so far, again, almost saved the day with, with his gift of the gab, with his little um, inspirational speech. Um, but again, it wasn't enough because, yes, they can hear this if, they can hear this speech, but they can see that the cartoon is absolute trash. Uh, <laughs> absolute trash. So, yeah. Um, but in the end, Team Affinity won. Ravi as PM won, obviously because Affinity had the best of a bad bunch. Um, and this is why I think Avi needs to calm down. He needs to calm down. You see him, he was like, 
I had a taste of victory, yeah. I can't, you said, I can't wait for more. And he was smiling hard, like literally his, his smile was up here, crazy. Um, but Avi needs to calm down because he only won because the Ever team was so poor. He didn't win because he performed really, really well. He won because the Ever team was absolutely shocking. Um, so, so he needs to relax a little bit. But who knows? Maybe he can show his credentials in, in a future task and maybe keep winning. You never know. But to me, he just seems, yeah, I'm not a fan of, of Avi at all. He just, yeah, very awkward guy. Um, and to be fair, in that task, Greg did go completely missing. Um, so in the end, people the people that were brought back into the boardroom was Greg um, and Denisha as a sub team leader, and also Reese as the PM, of course. So in my thinking at the time, I was thinking, okay, maybe because Greg didn't contribute anything, Greg should actually go home. But I also thought he had some more to give in in the process potentially. Denisha, she ran the sub team poorly um, but again I feel like I want to see a little bit more of her before she goes um, and Reese, again I don't think he done enough wrong himself in this task um, to kind of go home so I thought it was a very tough one but in the end I think that Greg also made a very good point about Reese being this has been his field this is this is his field and he actually um, he was actually yeah the task was poor um, this was his field so he probably should have done a bit better but as a PM but in the end, the person that went home was Greg, was Greg. And I think, to be fair, Alan Sugar did make the right choice on this occasion, just based on the fact that he wasn't involved in this task at all. Um, and due, due to, his, due to his, his lack of involvement and also his, um, his, his unadaptability um, as well, just the fact that he just wasn't involved at all. So, yeah, I think Greg was the right decision to be going home. As well as um, that, there was some news around Denisha will have to be the PM next week, no matter what. So I think that would be a good test for her as well. It'd be good. It'd be good to see her credentials and see how she does and see if she actually really is just a really poor leader, or it was just a bad day with a poor team around her. Um, yeah. So they're going to be in Brighton and Hove, which is obviously on the south coast of England, um, and they have to look for nine items. Um, so I'm looking forward to this task. This task in Apprentice is always one of my favourite tasks just because um, it's always interesting to see because um, both teams have to get the same items. And this is a task about buying the right things for the cheapest amount um, of money. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they get on travelling around Brighton, trying to find these items and trying to negotiate a lowest price possible. Um, so yeah, looking forward to this this task. Um, and again, the teams have also changed again. So that changes the dynamics a little bit as well. So yes, that was episode three, week three. And I'm looking forward to next week, week four. So yeah, catch me on the next one. Next Thursday, Dear Apprentice, week three, episode four. And if you like that, like, comment, subscribe and all of that jazz. Catch you next week. Let's get it. <laughs>